Shepard. He's a hero. But he's just one man. If we lose Shepard, humanity might well follow. The great success for us was that we have millions of people out there who loved the first game and really want to know what happens next. The story in Mass Effect 2 ends up going to some of the really dark places in the galaxy. One of the key themes for Mass Effect 2 is this whole concept of, of darkness. It's almost like the Empire Strikes Back of the Mass Effect trilogy. It's, it's a dark second chapter. It's moody. It's like that dark space you kind of keep secret that we're scratching at that you're going to go to in this game. Well, Mass Effect 2 is a darker game. We definitely wanted to support that with the lighting. Definitely going to some gritty worlds. We go right from clean space stations to sort of the dark end of the spectrum. From a cinematic point of view, lighting is so important. We wanted to make each level have its own color palette, have its own uh, lighting style. What this allows us to do is to guide the player uh, through color uh, and lighting, through the story, through the ups and downs. But each level is designed with its own specific color mixture, color temperature, um, color palette in mind. It falls to me to remove your stain from our world. Stop talking and get to it. Attack! The environments in Mass Effect 2 are uh, so much more alive than, than in the first one. Approaching Steren Docking Cradle 17. We have so much more diverse range of places and locations to visit in the second one. So we wanted to go to a place called Omega, which is the opposite of the Citadel. It's a uh, station that's built underneath this uh, asteroid that's mining it. It's beat up, it's dirty, it's seedy. It's got more environment for like smoke and dirt. It's really an exciting place. That's close enough. This is the Krogan homeworld. One of the things that we really wanted to, to play up with this world is, is just how blasted it is. It, you know, it's absolutely ruined. The wind here is just, it's just harsh and ripping. It kicks up all kinds of dust and atmosphere and really just make the player feel like it's this choking experience. You can go to a bright, shiny location and it looks natural in the world. You can go to a really dark and dreary location it fits as well. And the team has used that to actually just drive the emotional engagement of the environments to a whole new level. One of the key focuses for the sound design for Mass Effect was this concept of darker, kind of noise-polluted world that we have in Mass Effect 2. You're visiting these horrible, horrible sort of places that you really wouldn't want to hang around in. And it makes a, a real big difference when, when the audio is really feeding into that whole vibe. We could just knock around and take her. I'd like to see you try. This isn't like the other hubs we've seen here. We wanted to take it to a, a darker, kind of more intense kind of feel with the, uh, the music. Shepard Commander, we concluded the destruction of this station was the only resolution to the heretic question. There is now a second option. So we're using sounds that have got a kind of a, a more mysterious and ominous kind of tone. And so um, there is this more kind of uh, nihilistic sound to the, the soundtrack. Their virus can be repurposed. If released into the station's network, the heretics will be rewritten to accept our truth. There's no moral difference between the two. If you change who the heretics are, you've killed them. Or release the virus. Acknowledged. So, with this assassin, you planning to stop him? I'm just here to make sure he survives. With the sound design for Mass Effect 2, we try very hard to create a unique and viable soundscape. For an example, the, uh, the flying cars that you hear traveling around in places like the Citadel and, and Ilium. There's a, there's a bridge downtown that's got this really strange kind of corrugated metal arrangement on the floor that's got this uh, really interesting sound when cars drive over it. So I recorded all these strange pass-by sounds and sort of distorted the sound to, to create this weird sort of uh, tonal element as, uh, as the cars fly past. And you can hear that in all of the, uh, the flybys on uh, places like that. I think the fans are going to be incredibly impressed with how high quality Mass Effect 2 is. We've got a job to do. 
Let's get to it. Really intense cinematic sequences, emotionally engaging narrative. Our place in the universe is more fragile than we'd like to think. Beautiful characters, characters you really feel are, are just credible and real characters you can interact with. I think what we've got is, is, is a game that's even better than we thought it was going to be when we started designing it. It feels like you're playing your own game, like we built it just for you, the fan. It's like uncharted territory. It's, it's a world within a world. For those people who think you're the center of the universe, now you are. It's a roller coaster ride right to the end. It's fantastic. It's just incredible. There is, there is no limit to it. I'm really proud of the Mass Effect 2 team. I mean, they just poured their hearts and souls into this. They're smart and they're creative and they're passionate, and they really worked hard to deliver an amazing experience for you, the fans. We need to hurry. Right. It's not only an incredibly ambitious story in terms of what we're trying to do, but for players, it is an incredibly ambitious achievement to have played through, you know, one, two, and then three games where all of your decisions, all your actions, are actually starting to cascade and they're affecting the entire world around you. I think people are just going to be blown away by it. And they'll start to really sense the direction that the game is going and the trilogy is going. And uh, people are going to be pretty excited and, and uh, chomping at the bit for the next installment.